In this video, we define electric current and the units of current, and we explore the meaning of the area bounded by a current versus time graph. So when you apply a potential difference across a wire, charge begins to flow, and current is the rate of charge flow. So current is telling me how much charge passes through the conductor for a given amount of time. The units of current are coulombs per second, and that gets a special name. It's called an ampere or an amp. To be clear about what's going on inside the current carrying wire, I made two pictures below. So in the first picture, we're pretending that what's carrying the current is actually positive charges flowing from high potential to low potential. But in reality, we know that the positive nuclei of the atoms in this material are fixed in place. And really what's able to move and be shared from atom to atom is the outer electrons around each atom. Those are actually allowed to travel great distances through the wire. So what's really happening is my rightward pointing current corresponds to a leftward flow of negative charge. These are electrons moving from low potential to high potential. It's interesting to note that even for substantial currents, these electron speeds are measured in millimeters per second, so they're remarkably slow. And that speed is called the drift velocity of the electrons. And I'll post a link to a video where we derive an expression for drift velocity. For now, we're going to look at a simple example. We're asked to compute the total charge transfer when a current of magnitude 5 amps flows for 30 seconds. So if I look at the definition of current, all we have to do here is solve for delta Q, and I get I delta T. I is 5 amps, and delta T is 30 seconds, and I get 150 coulombs of charge flowing. Now let's move on to talk about the meaning of the graph of current as a function of time, or I of T. So on the left, I've just made a generic I of T graph. I have a starting time of T1 and a finishing time of T2. And I've marked what looks like a little rectangle in the middle. That's a thin slice under the graph of I of T. And the area of that slice is approximately given by the formula for the area of a rectangle, which is height times width. If I say that we're located at some arbitrary time T, then the height here is actually the current evaluated at that time. The width. That's a little delta t. The rectangle area then is i of t times delta t. And I recognize this from our previous example. If I take i and I multiply by delta t, it gives me the amount of charge that's flowed during that amount of time. Well, what if we chop up the entire area from t1 to t2 into little rectangles? You can see that we're committing a little bit of error here. I measured the heights of the rectangles at the right hand side of each subinterval. And so they were underestimating over here on the left and overestimating on the right. But provided we slice it thin enough, the areas of all those rectangles together gives me the total amount of charge that's flowed on that time interval. For those of you with a little bit of calculus background, I could write this as an integral. So I could say the total charge flow would be the integral from T1 to T2 of I of T dt. All right, let's wrap things up with an example. A couple days ago, I actually performed this experiment in the lab. And what we're looking at here is a lantern battery. Here's a power resistor that's a 10 ohm resistor that can handle high amounts of current without burning up. And I put this into the circuit in order to slow down the charging of this capacitor over here. So this blue capacitor is nominally one farad. In series with this circuit is a current probe that talks to a piece of software that's going to plot current as a function of time. And then we attach to the positive terminal of the capacitor. Then I go from the negative terminal of the capacitor back to the negative terminal of the battery. In addition, I've connected a multimeter across the terminals of the capacitor. And that's going to measure voltage as the capacitor charges higher and higher and higher. We're going to watch that voltage go up and up and up. And we'll need that final voltage number at the end of the experiment. So here's how the experiment went. And keep in mind that this is playing at two times the ordinary rate because it would just take too much time to play it in a YouTube video. All right, here we go. I can see that my experiment starts out with rather large current. I was really close to a half an amp right at the beginning. And then it's decreasing and decreasing and leveling off. And this is the characteristic behavior of what's called an RC circuit. That stands for a resistor capacitor circuit which is exactly what we've put together here. So that current's really starting to flatten out now. That means the charge on the capacitor is approaching its maximum value. And 
and that potential difference is getting real close to its maximum value now, which turns out to be 6.30 volts for this experiment. All right, so let's take a look at the output of our experiment. I have a graph of IFT, and I have the integral computed numerically just in the software. And it says the integral comes out to 6.831 amp seconds. Well, what's an amp second? An amp is a coulomb per second. If I multiply both sides by seconds, I find that an amp second is a coulomb. All right, so this is just a funny way of saying coulombs. 6.831 coulombs of total charge flow given by the area under the graph of I of T. You may have noticed in the video that our final potential difference across the capacitor was 6.30 volts. And then our mission here is to actually get an experimental value of the capacitance. And we'll compare that to the one farad nominal value on the capacitor. Okay, so I get 1.08 farads. The capacitors are labeled as one farad, so this is about an 8% error. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.